began because of there was a broad recognition of the challenges and the opportunities uh, to basically improve how we're doing uh, uh, raising animals throughout the world. Uh, our present uh, stature in the United States, our abilities in the United States to uh, raise animals very efficiently, very sustainably, comes about through superb scientific efforts in the past that have led to improved breeding techniques, led to animals gaining more weight, having far less disease than they had in the past. So th this in the past has sort of uh, led us to believe, uh, perhaps a little complacently, that we can deal with the challenges of the future. And the challenges of the future are great, and that's a major reason that uh, the Department of Agriculture initiated this with the National Academy, and so many co-sponsors joined in. We have the Gates Foundation, uh, which is particularly interested in the global issues related to animal agriculture, and we have basically representatives of just about every animal sector. Uh, who have co-sponsored this report. And the challenges really are because of the, uh, by the year 2050, it is anticipated that there'll be close to a doubling of the amount of animal protein eaten by people in the world. Two major reasons for that. There'll be uh, perhaps a 30% or more increase in just our population. So even if we were to eat the same amount, we would have far more people eating that animal protein. But the globalization, the increased uh, well-being of people in places like China uh, have led to a tremendous increase per, in per capita animal protein consumption. That's what people want, and that's what people uh, tend to eat around the world. So while we in the United States and in Western Europe uh, are uh, animal protein con um, consumption is sort of leveled off. For the most of the rest of the world, one can predict a, a significant increase. And again, American a uh, animal agriculture has been so important to total world animal agriculture that we expect this will lead to a, uh, a need for increased productivity uh, of animal agriculture. A another uh, reason for this is the recognition uh, that there's a, a just tremendous opportunity because of the biology, the biological advances. We're doing a much better job of understanding uh, why uh, animals grow, uh, what is it that's a healthful feed for animals, what's the healthful way to increase animal productivity. Uh, the United States, uh, other countries, other developed countries in the world far exceed the capabilities of uh, uh, lesser developed countries. So there's an opportunity to transfer some of that, that known technology as well as to improve it for the United States and, and uh, other developed countries as well as for the developing world in order to meet the, uh, meet the need. But it's because we have so many advances in biology and, and putting that together in a way that uh, leads to uh, meeting uh, the foreseen demand is particularly important. There are other very important challenges that, that need to be met. We're, we have a challenge with antibiotic use, which has at least partially been responsible for better, more healthy animals and for uh, spurring uh, growth of, uh, of animals. Uh, um, and uh, clearly, antibiotic resistance has increased. Uh, to some extent, animal uh, productivity, uh, the use of antibiotics uh, in animals has contributed to this. And so there's a need to do a better job uh, of, of performing the research that will allow us to raise animals either without the use of antibiotics or to be done in such a way where uh, increased antibiotic resistance will not occur. And uh, there's also a lot, of, uh, a lot more in our present world of public involvement in uh, all sorts of things, but animal agriculture being one of them. Animal welfare is of definite concern to the public uh, and is being met in part by new research as to how to most uh, uh, appropriately raise animals with attention to their welfare. Now, a lot of this has to do with communication and is a, also uh, the opportunity, the challenge and the opportunity to do a better job of respectful communication in both directions between the public and uh, the animal agriculture community and the animal agriculture community and the public. And to do that, uh, again, this is an area which we, we see as having uh, a research opportunity that has not been, been met before. 
the importance to the United States is in many different ways. One, one is the opportunities to build on what we've done in the past so well and to make sure we continue uh, being able to do this. Uh, it's uh, led us to um, uh, everything from much better food for ourselves to uh, a, a, a very significant contributor to our, uh, our ability to sell things around the world. Our agricultural produce is well known to, uh, around the world and, is, and where our farmers are able to uh, sell uh, to the rest of the world uh, because we've had this lead through the years. So again, there are, there are economic benefits uh, to all of us. And uh, as uh, most important to a lot of people is the, the issues having to do with animal welfare, with the appropriate foods to eat, with healthy foods for ourselves. And again, this is all part of a need to, uh, to develop a, a, a more, uh, a, a new, uh, acceleration, a reinvigoration of our animal research enterprise. The key message of our report is the importance of reinvigorating animal research uh, in this country and supporting it uh, through our research throughout the world. Uh, we need to be able to build upon what we've done so well in the past, but to reverse what has been stagnant funding of animal science uh, in this country. We need to be sure that we have the infrastructure in our universities. We need to have our university scientists work more closely with uh, industry scientists. Uh, there's been a number of public-private partnerships that have been developed. Uh, Congress and the president have been involved in one recently. We strongly support those we think they're important to do. We need a breadth of scientific approach, which includes folks and from uh, social sciences who will help uh, perform the research that will lead to uh, better communication, more respectful communication between the industry and the community and vice versa. We need to be able to work with ecosystem folks to deal with the issues that uh, have to do with our global climate change, with other in environmental changes in a world where the natural resources are increasingly becoming limited, if for no other reason than, than possible population growth. We need to be able to uh, effectively uh, work with public health, the public health community on issues like antibiotics. So again, there's this breadth of, uh, of uh, interactions that are needed that are not, we're not as strong as we need to be right now if we're going to be able to deal with the almost doubling of animal protein use by the year 2050.